Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 23rd of the May Leco Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's farm. So, you're given binary strings M and N. What does that mean? Return the size of the largest subset of strings such that there are at most M zeros and N ones in the subset. Okay. Uh, so, this is saying we have. Okay. So first thing I like to do is kind of look at the constraints to see what are the things that we can do. The the thing to notice is that um, hmm, M and N are terrible. So let's call it, let's change it to zeros and ones, right? Um, yeah, so we're given 100 zeros and 100 ones. So what does this mean, right? Um, and maybe this is still dynamic programming session. I don't know anymore, right? But, um, but the idea here is you know, thinking about the states, right? The the question is, hmm, what what's a hundred times a hundred times six hundred or something? Hmm. I don't know. In this subset, okay, yeah. Um, hmm. <clears throat> There are a couple of ways we can think about doing it. Uh, I think the first way is just thinking about um, dynamic programming and then whether that is fast enough. 100 times 100 times 600 is going to be, feels a little bit too slow for states. Um, so I, I don't think I want to do that. Uh, mm. And this is just the number of things in each. Hmm. Let me think about this for a second. Hundred times, because that's six million, right? A hundred times a hundred times six hundred. So that is that feels slow. Uh, at least in Python. Uh, in other languages, maybe it's a little. Maybe it should be fast enough. Um, so I'm thinking to see whether I'm missing something obvious. But the constraints are pretty okay. I mean, this one doesn't really mean anything. It's just, you know, you could go through the entire thing linear and then do the math anyway. Um, of course, you should pre-calculate this so that you don't have to, or pre-process this so that you don't have to keep on going to it. But the 600 is a little bit peculiar. Hmm. Okay. So I think the first, and this is where, you know, we talk about, in the last week, if you haven't been, or you should be uh, doing it together last week, um, or if you did, then that would be easier for me to explain. One is kind of thinking about the analysis, right? So the analysis that I'm thinking of is kind of just like get, uh, get max, I think, of an index, zeros, and ones, right? And this will be our constraint. Uh, this, uh, this is what's been going on in my mind, right? And what, let's say we have this and these are our states. What does this mean, right? Index can go from zero to n, where where n is less than 600. Uh, zeros, ones, let's separate it out, zero to 100. And ones is also one, zero to 100, right? And of course, the time complexity, roughly speaking, is going to be a uh, number of inputs times input or time per input. So number of inputs is going to be 100 times 100 times 600, while uh, <clears throat> while uh, each input, time per input, is probably all of one, right? Is my projection in my head? I'm thinking that this is maybe a little bit getting it close with respect to time and space. Um, and some of the, uh, I know that uh, uh, very often I've been kind of hand wavy on the space, um, <clears throat> but there is a, um, uh, things do tie in together, right? Meaning that space is not just space for space sake, but also, but also it is possible that you know, in allocating the space, it takes a lot more time in total. Um, but that said, I think the one key thing to know about this particular problem is that a lot of inputs are not possible. And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that, for example, uh, so you know, 
this this is a very rough analysis for number of possible inputs, but a lot of those inputs are not possible, right? Um, because, for example, let's say we have, uh, let's even take this first example, right? Let's say we have this example, uh, and if we set up naively, we set index is equal to zero is the first one, zero is equal to five, one is equal to three, right? Um, and then now let's say we process the first item, we, and there are only two choices, whether we put this in a subset or we don't. And if we put it in, this can only go to index is equal to one, zero is equal to four, one is equal to two. If we do put it in, or if we don't put it in, then this is equal to this, right? Something like that. But of course, in these case, it is impossible to go to it is impossible to go to index is equal to one, zeros is equal to ones, for example, and ones is equal to zero, something like that, right? So this is an impossible case. So in reality, in theory, the space is is, is uh, better, but to be honest, this is uh, a little bit hand wavy, and I'm not super confident about the analysis about this unless I'm just doing something really wrong, right? So that's kind of you know, sometimes maybe it's okay to YOLO a little bit. And 6 million is probably really tight. But that said, but that said, <clears throat> maybe enough of it is not possible that we can go. Okay, so then now the, the, the thing we try to do is if index is equal to n, we process all of these, then we want to return zero, right? And then otherwise, um, actually, we should pre-process first, like we said, so we don't keep on pre-processing the string. So then let, let, let's just go um, the z's is equal to uh, 0 times n, 1's, uh, o's, if you will, n, and then for i in range of n, um, z's is equal to uh, that count of 0. You can write this in other, probably more efficient ways, but this is the way that I'm going to write it. Um, and then here now, then the get max is that we can, two choices, right? We can either use this subset, use or use this string in the subset, or not. So if we use it, then the, okay, let's say best answer is equal to zero. If we use it, then the best possible answer is going to get max of index plus one. We move on to the next index, and then zero is minus, Z, oh, this is messed up, whoops. Um, sub index, and then plus one, oops, plus one for, plus one for um, using the subset or using the string, or not, which is just going on to the next index, right? Oh, I forgot to do the ones. I got confused because I hit on the volume button instead. Right? Um, also, this is in the wrong place. It should be inside the function. Okay. And again, I don't do the memorization yet, just so that we can kind of let's play around with it, right? Um, yeah. Oh, I, this is obviously wrong because we have to check that we have enough zeros and ones on the restriction. So if zeros is greater than uh, zero index and ones is greater. Than... Okay. Hopefully this should be good without no more typos. Though again, this isn't cache, but that's fine. Oh, this is an infinite loop because I forgot to do index plus one. Silly typo, but that's fine. Easy typo to fix. Uh, so this looks good. Again, this is going to time out because we have really big numbers. Um, so then, the, so I, I would say one thing that I did, did in the past with these videos. Um, and I urge that if you have confusion about these kind of problems, look at my last couple of videos because we've been doing dynamic programming, right? So the way that I usually do it is just has cache and a cache thing. So the problem here is that in, if we do the has cache and the cache thing, we would allocate space for every possible item, right? So what we want to do is actually only allocate space for stuff that we use. Um, so then here we would have a lookup table. It is harder to, to show the bound, but that's basically, um, yeah. And then here we can go if, in the, and we just use the tuple as a key, then return lookup of this tuple. Otherwise, we at the very end, we set the tuples up. 
Let's see if this is slightly faster. Hmm. Uh, oops. I don't know how I mistyped that. But okay. It is not. But uh, let's give it some mid. Let's see how that goes. See if it's fast enough. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. This one is tough because it's tough to kind of narrow down the bounds a little bit. Uh, let's see what I Larry did in the past. Uh, oh, he did it bottoms up. Hmm. No, I did do the caching though. Uh, so if you want to see the bottoms up, check out my video from last year. But this is how I do it, tops down. Um, and apparently the running time is roughly the same, so I don't know what to make of it. Um, but yeah, as we talked about, oh, I didn't do the actual multiplication. So yeah, so the time complexity is going to be O of Z for the number of zeros, O for the number of ones, and then N is the number of inputs is time. Uh, and then space is also the same thing because same logic here. Um, yeah, uh, cool. Uh, yeah, that's all I have for this one. Uh, let me know what you think. Stay good, stay healthy to good mental health. I'll see you later and take care. Bye-bye.